All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. So we'll start with Rainbow Baby. All right, well, I think that you guys um, already got a chance to meet me. I'm Keith Ponitz, I'm the Residency Program Director. Um, but more importantly, we're going to uh, let you learn about our program from two of our future um, chief residents, Deborah Rosenbaum and Melissa Zeglin. And so I will let them tell you about our program. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. Um, and thank you for your interest um, in the Midwest region. Um, so I'm Deborah. I'm a PGY3 um, resident. I'm one of the four um, upcoming chief residents for next year. Um, and I wanted to just talk about a couple of highlights of our program, which I think really um, uniquely add to the training here at Rainbow um, that contribute to our own individual personal wellness and also um, shaping the medical education and exposure, um, making us um, you know, the outstanding pediatricians. Um, and so the first thing that I wanted to highlight um, is the annual theme of the year. Um, as an initiative um, in 2018, a couple of years ago um, from the PDs, um, in an effort to mitigate our resident burnout, we've come up with um, annual themes of the year, um, which are really wellness themes. Um, so past year's themes have been finding meaning at work, challenging ourselves, being upstanders. Um, and this year, the theme is being our best selves. Um, and so we can do self-reflection, think about what led us into medicine, what brings us joy and meaning. Um, how do we challenge ourselves to achieve our goals, uh, both professionally and personally? Um, and how can we take upon a mission to be upstanders for our, our micro and macro communities? And I think um, that, uh, you know, all the check-ins that we have, whether individually um, with conversations from our friends, program directors, um, or together as an entire residency class really allows us to press pause, reflect and ground ourselves, uh, giving us the ability to um, regain our strengths, um, to continue the rewarding and at times challenging um, work that we do. Uh, another highlight of our program is the mentorship that we get from our faculty. Um, so we have a couple of unique opportunities where residents are paired with faculty members. Um, and so the first is at the start of every year, every intern is uh, paired with a faculty member, either in the interest um, that they have expressed uh, in a subspecialty, although no pressure, of course. Um, and this faculty member is really just a point person for us um, to go to for guidance. We check in um, at at least one to two uh, uh, points throughout the year. And um, these uh, faculty members really can help guide us, help us spell out our goals for the year, what we wanna work on um, to um, you know, get through that first intern year as we get through our training. Uh, we also have track advisors um, and I'll mention the tracks in um, a minute, but um, there are a couple of tracks that we have that we get to choose from throughout residency and each of those um, has a specific advisor and these, um, Faculty members guide us through the three years that we have um, in part of our tracks. Um, they help us strengthen um, and advance our skills in whether it be research, med ed, and hone in on um, skills becoming advocates for patients. Um, and again, these advisors um, and these faculty members are really people who we can create closer relationships to. Um, we have multiple uh, opportunities as well uh, for primary care experiences. Um, we spend the majority of our time uh, training um, at a more urban um, practice. It's our Rainbow Center for Women's and Children's, um, which is actually a huge, beautiful um, new building that was built um, just uh, about a little bit more than uh, two and a half years ago. Um, where we see mostly women, um, sorry, mostly children um, of the surrounding communities. Um, and they are usually of the lower socioeconomic status, high volume, um, and they're of the inner um, city population. Um, and this is the clinic that we, um, you know, work at um, when we are on our elective time. Um, but we also have a really unique opportunity in our second year um, to do an, a different suburban experience of uh, primary care training. Um, it's called OBRA, Outpatient Based Resident Experience, where we join smaller practices for an elective um, and see how individualized pediatric practices 
um, run their run their practice, practice their own pediatric medicine, um, and it's an opportunity to get a different experience and exposure to outpatient pediatrics. One minute. Um, I'm sorry. One, One minute. minute. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll just quickly go through. Uh, we do have. I mentioned our outpatient um, pediatric practice um, is a huge, new, beautiful um, uh, building where we have multiple practices. Um, within that home, really allowing us to give full um, care to our patients, um, whether it be dietitians, legal work, social work, dentists, ophthalmology, to really get all their care in at once. Um, and then finally, being a freestanding children's hospital um, really allows for uh, robust subspecialty service um, for e almost every subspecialty. Um, we have our own radiology, imaging suites, um, surgical suites, and then also allows us to be a part of um, a larger institution where we have um, backup from colleagues um, when, um, when we need it. Um, our curriculum spe uh, special highlight is the six plus two scheduling system. Uh, so this was in 2018, we were the first of um, only a few residency programs um, where we trialed the six plus two. Um, so every six weeks of inpatient, we have a guaranteed two week outpatient um, elective, allowing us to um, actually have continuity of um, inpatient care and we're not feeling like we're pulled in either directions. And this has been a huge game changer in the wellness of our program and the um, ability to um, really provide care for both inpatient and outpatients. Um, in our junior year, we have a special, um, sec so our junior year is our second year. It's a special elective where we do um, and called Silver Junior. It's an inpatient um, general pediatrics practice where we only are the second year. So no seniors, no interns. We are running the show um, together with the help and guidance of our attendings where we are challenged to make our own decisions, um, use our medical management and knowledge um, to guide um, our patient care. And that is a really huge stepping stone, especially in the second year coming off of intern year um, as we become seniors in our third. Um, I'm going to skip uh, part of the curriculum. Uh, one more minute. Is that okay, Sana? Um, I'm sorry. Is it okay if I just move on and then at the end, once all sure. the students have And if anyone has questions, we'll be in the breakout rooms later. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. The next program we have. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Weisdriver from the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. I'm the program director and really quickly I'll have uh, a couple of people say hi. Chandra Smith is our wonderful coordinator. Can you wave hello and say hi, Chandra? Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. And joined by our chief resident, Laura Geyser. Hey, guys. Happy to be here. And later in the happy hour, Chandra Holmes and Nicole Welke are two wonderful residents who will be joining at that point. Uh, our residents' favorite thing about our program is each other. Uh, by far and away, that's what they say whenever you ask them. Uh, we have a culture of camaraderie and a close-knit community in our program, um, and lots going on there. I'll tell you about a few things as we go through. We consider ourselves the best of both worlds, and the local community, Children's Wisconsin, is huge. In the outpatient arena, uh, more than 80% of the children attend children's medical group clinics, where our residents often do continuity clinic, um, and we have many specialty clinics throughout the city. For inpatient care, well over 90% of children admitted into the hospital come to Children's Wisconsin so our residents get to care for them and have a close relationship in our community. Uh, we are also a regional, national, and international referral center for all kinds of specialties. Um, and uh, too many to mention, but certainly one we like to talk about, our cardiology program has an international reputation for the biggest center for uh, the care of hypoplastic left heart syndrome, uh, which, which is a, um, a wonderful thing that they do here in Milwaukee. We have a lot of resident-led committees that make a real difference. Uh, a few of them are Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, Advocacy Committee, Solidarity in Medicine, Wellness Committee. Uh, of note, we are in the middle of Summer Olympics here in Milwaukee. It's a one-month period every year where our residents and guest faculty uh, compete with each other in a fun way to keep each other active, uh, earning points, and we do it again in the winter. Uh, we have a residency advisor panel, a recruitment committee, and much more. Mentorship is important. We believe in the concept of team mentorship here. So we have a large team of mentors uh, that our residents have, including faculty advisors, track mentors, coordinators, associate program directors, chief residents, who are all selected in a large part based on their ability to provide mentorship. We have a robust curriculum. 
uh, with over 50 different continuity clinic sites that our residents choose throughout the Milwaukee area, including uh, Spanish speaking options as well. Amazing electives from A to Z, I picked a few selected letters to share with you tonight uh, in the A's, allergy, advocacy, lots of specialties, medical education, research, and zany, creatively designed new options made by our residents. We have at least one, if not more, residents created every year based on resident interest uh, in creating some new things. We have an individualized curriculum with eight tracks, which include global and community health, which is an exceptionally strong track in our program, hospital medicine, primary care, specialty and research, if this scares you and you're not sure what you want to do, the career identification track is a great choice. A hybrid of multiple of these in child neurology. Uh, lots of diversity initiatives. I mentioned we have a wonderful diversity, equity, inclusion committee uh, that has a huge role and impact in our program, has helped us expand our curriculum. We have a new cultural humility curriculum. They helped create ongoing efforts to recruit and retain residents, fellows, and faculty. Uh, traditionally underrepresented in medicine. They want me to tell you on September 8th, uh, email us to learn more about a virtual meeting we're gonna have for any students who'd like to hear more about DEI efforts in our program. Expanding LGBTQIA curriculum, a dedicated gender clinic, that's a joint venture between our endocrine and adolescent uh, departments that's uh, available to all our residents during the adolescent rotation, which is a new initiative, which is fantastic. Um, we have uh, very proud that last year we had two residents, one in the APPD AIM scholars, and one in the New Century Scholars, which are leadership development programs uh, for residents who are underrepresented in medicine. So we're very proud to participate in those programs. We are a medium-sized program with 70 peds residents, four peds anesthesia, two peds neuro, one prelim. 55% of our grads go into fellowship and 45% in primary care. So we're very proud of that balance. And within the world of fellowships, we're very proud of the diversity of fellowship type they're doing, as well as places all over, um, including staying here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, one of our primary care graduates was very excited to go join a rural practice in Alaska. She had never set foot there at all. That was a lifelong dream to get to Alaska. Um, and so we're proud to participate in, in those kind of things with our residents. Milwaukee is the largest city in Wisconsin and the 31, 31st largest in America with tremendous diversity and active refugee community and many underserved patients that uh, drive a lot of our residents to join our program who want to participate in advocacy efforts. We are the coolest and most underrated city in the Midwest, according to Vogue magazine. Therefore, it must be true. Uh, and I'm so delighted to tell you we are the home of the world champion Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, we are still having chills from that. And it's almost too much to think that the Milwaukee Brewers and Green Bay Packers may follow suit this year. So perhaps we will hold all of the titles in some of these sports going forward. Thank you so much for uh, listening to our mini presentation and please ask our residents question in the happy hour afterwards and email us if you would like to hear anything more about our program. Hi everyone, I'm Joanna and I'm the program director at Advocate Children's Hospital in Park Ridge. I am joined by Andrea, one of our chief residents today. And then two of our residents will be at the resident session afterwards. Um, I just want to say it's so fun to see all of my Midwest colleagues here. It's really great. We all work with each other in different ways and some familiar faces of students always make it so fun. So um, I just some things, a lot of things you can see here about things I wanted to talk about about our program. Um, we are a medium sized program. So we have 14 um, residents per year in our program. So we think it makes for a really nice feel of our program. We are proud that we attract residents from all over. So right now of our 40 residents, they come from 32 different med schools. So we're really excited to have different people bring in different opportunities. We have a really nice mix of MDs and DOs in our program too, which we like for the variety of experiences that people bring to the table. Um, we have a few highlights of our program. I think like everybody mentioned, you know, we want to um, have lots of wellness initiatives and we want to really form a place where you can be mentored and advised. We, um, along with Rainbow Babies, like they mentioned, are the um, national leaders for X plus Y scheduling and PEDS. So this is now um, our, fifth, our fourth year of doing X plus Y. So we do a three plus one schedule, which our residents really love. Um, there are now 28 programs in the country. So I actually noticed today there's an X plus Y program, at least one in every breakout room for today. So that makes us super proud. Um, but we have all really partnered together in this initiative. And I think for us, we don't only think of X plus Y as um, we think it's really the right thing for our program, but also it's just a marker of how within our program, we love to innovate and just think outside the box that even when there's not 
a problem, we continue to listen to resident feedback and think about how we can do things better and differently. Another thing we're really proud of is um, the resident and faculty relationships. So um, both your advisor that's assigned and the mentors that you develop, really, I think my role as the program director is to make sure we're like creating a culture of mentorship where people can find their mentors for all the different things that they need. So you might need one mentor that's in the field of pediatrics you want to go into and one mentor that does the medical education work you want to do or one mentor that does the research. I needed one mentor that was just like another working mom trying to figure out how to get through the day. So you need different um, mentors for different things and we try to provide that. We also are really proud of the graduated autonomy that we give our residents throughout the program. So actually right now I am sitting in clinic because it is our evening clinic and outside the door one of my third year residents is precepting the second year residents and um, is really functioning in like almost an attending role with me here to help her. So um, I think that's just an, an emblematic of what we like. We believe that the goal of pediatric residency training as I think do all of my colleagues is um, to really get an excellent general pediatric foundation in both inpatient and outpatient needs. So you can go on to be the best generalist or subspecialist possible. We know that having that great solid base is what's gonna prepare you to be successful no matter what you go into. Um, we have our continuity clinic on site, which we love. Um, we have three fellowship programs here, PICU, NICU, and um, a new hospitalist medicine fellowship that will be starting in July. Um, we just love spending time together. We love spending time with our patients. We have a diverse group of patients um, because obviously we're right outside the Chicago area. Um, we have some residents who are trilingual, many residents who are bilingual. Um, they speak 14 different languages in our program. So um, there's something like 55 languages represented in our clinic. So they usually can get used pretty frequently. Um, we, and the last thing is we do a combination of academic half day and Zoom conference teaching. So we like to have the break in the middle of the day for all the residents to come together, build community, but also we do small group teaching during our clinic week. So every fourth week when you're in clinic, you have two academic half days that are just with the other 10 people in your group. We really wanted to create a curriculum that worked for both sort of introverts and extroverts, people that want to work in big group settings and people that prefer to work in small groups. So we've incorporated both of that. Um, I know we weren't supposed to ask for, I mean, we're not supposed to tell advice necessarily, but I just want to reassure everyone that everything is going to be fine. All of our interns are very happy where they are. Um, so please make sure you ask people those questions, but virtual interviews are going to be good. You're going to be great. And I just wish everyone the best of luck and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Hi everybody, I'm Bridget Boyd. I'm the program director at Brush. So nice to see you all. Um, uh, I agree with Joanna that this is one of my favorite group of people. It's so great to see all these wonderful um, familiar faces here. Um, and I'm actually gonna kick it to my uh, one of my APDs, Colleen Nash, who's gonna get us started. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, I'm Colleen Nash, I'm one of the associate program directors and also one of the pediatric infectious diseases faculty. Um, it's a pleasure to represent uh, Rush University Children's Hospital this evening. Um, and so we are right in the heart of Chicago, a wonderful city if you haven't been. Um, and so our medical center, which is a huge complex, we're a children's hospital within a larger um, system and we are kind of just west of center. Um, so that allows for kind of a, a, a large draw of patient population, certainly um, those immediate surrounding neighborhoods um, and especially the near west side. Um, and then we also have two um, community-based um, satellite hospitals um, from which we receive a lot of hospital transfers and other kind of suburban um, transfers. So we see kind of a wide breadth and depth of, of patients um, coming to us with all, all sorts of problems. Um, so, you know, it just allows for our residents to um, receive, you know, really excellent training in both bread and butter and also those complex um, patients. And we are operating with a medium-sized program, a total of 33 categoricals, as well as 16 um, MedPeds residents, which are just as much a part of our family um, as our categorical residents. Um, and, you know, this medium-sized program, um, like many others, allows for, you know, that close-knit community and really kind of the 
attending resident dynamic. Um, we do have some fellowships in um, the NICU, cardiology, hemonc, um, allergy and immunology, and endocrine. Um, but we are certainly a, re a resident driven program. Um, and we really value that kind of connection between attending and resident. Um, I can say just from being on service, being on clinical service quite a bit, um, I work with residents that not only rotate on ID, but then also um, those residents on the floor and in the units asking for consultation. Um, and it's just a really um, direct um, and um, just opportunity that's ripe with um, learning. Um, we certainly get those calls from the community um, that residents get to field first. Um, and so I kind of like to um, use that opportunity for the residents to take the page, take the call, um, and kind of ask them, well, what would you do? What would you advise? And so it kind of gives them that opportunity to, um, you know, be the first at it and then we kind of hash it out together. So it's really nice to have that um, connection um, directly between attendings and residents. Um, and certainly with that, um, we see that graded autonomy that, that many programs are attempting kind of going through PL1 to PL2 to PL3 year and kind of through those mo more difficult rotations, um, we kind of realized our residents need a bit of a pause. So PL2 year, um, our residents go through um, a month of a wellness rotation. So they're kind of not on um, any demanding clinical um, duties and kind of attending continuity clinic and otherwise just getting things done, catching up, catching up on life, catching up on research projects or whatever um, they need to. And so it's been a really um, well-liked and well-received um, rotation that um, we've actually been able to um, do some QI work around. Um, so just a really, um, kind of holistic approach to um, what is a, you know, a tough three years. Um, and, you know, we really encourage well-being, wellness in and outside of the hospital. Um, and we try to promote, again, maintaining um, attending resident staff um, camaraderie. Um, I think we have a Buffalo Bills tailgate planned for this weekend, as there are many uh, Buffalo Bills fans in our program. Um, kind of randomly. Um, and then we have a, you know, faculty resident happy hour plan for next month, um, just banking on the weather staying nice. So just lots of opportunities for connecting on a clinical and an academic level, um, as well as a social personal level um, and just maintaining those lines of communication. Um, and then I'll turn it back over to Bridget Foyt to say a few more words before we pass it along. So I'm a general I'm a general pediatrician. I work in our um, outpatient clinic and um, it, it's an amazing clinic. It's the reason I came to Rush. Um, it, like, like Colleen said, extremely diverse patient population. Um, we have 18 general pediatricians. We all see our own patients there as well as the entire residency program having their continuity clinic in that same clinic. And then they all spend a few months um, doing acute care in our clinic as well, where they're really part of the practice, answering phone calls, um, all those kinds of things. And it's just a great, great experience. And almost all of our inpatients um, are taken care of in that clinic as well. So a lot of continuity back and forth um, from the inpatient to outpatient, which I think is something that's unique about our program. And then the wellness rotation that Colleen mentioned, another great part of that is that that wellness um, rotator is also responsible for covering any other residents who have appointments to go to that month. So it, it can enable us to cover if someone needs to go to their counselor once a week for that month, the wellness rotator can cover them and that's done through the chief residence. So it's all anonymous. And that's really been a huge, huge um, help, um, especially in the past couple of years with mental health um, in our program. And we, um, another kind of unique thing is we have a low acuity PICU month um, that some interns really like. People who are thinking about ICU and wanna check it out, they get to do that intern year. Um, and then our third years uh, who get to do a night float, um, they're on their own. We don't have um, in-house hospitalists. So they have, a, again, a lot of autonomy, feel really independent when they're, um, when they're graduating. We're doing a lot of uh, diversity initiatives. We have a, um, a FTE protected faculty member in our department who is uh, working on all of our DNI initiatives. We have a lot of resident involvement. We're doing some really great stuff um, with that. We have a retreat every year where we shut down all the clinics for a half a day and all the faculty and all the residents go. 
Uh, we just had a meeting about it this morning where we're going to focus on um, institutional racism in the institution. I don't know if the institution is quite ready <laughs> for this retreat, but I'm really excited about it. So some good, um, good things happening, and it's just great to see you guys all here. So thanks for coming. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Rita Patel. I am the program director at Peyton Manning Children's Hospital, and I am joined by um, TC Fisher Heath and Sally Avedis. You guys want to say hi? Hi, everybody. Hey, guys, how's it going? Um, so thank you all for coming. It was really fun actually hearing about the other programs. I don't really get to hear about other programs. So you guys are so lucky to be able to choose from all these amazing programs that we have in our region. Um, fun to hear about what they're doing. I am um, also very proud of ours. We're doing a lot of great things um, at Peyton Manning as well. Um, we are a smaller program, six residents per class, but in a really big freestanding children's hospital um, that has um, 48 inpatient beds, a really busy 23 bed uh, PICU, which is expanding, um, a uh, 100 bed actually now uh, NICU, which is the largest level four NICU in the state. Um, so it's, even though we have six residents, we have a lot of clinical uh, care being given and lots of opportunity for our residents to um, and have individualized curriculum because um, they're really it. We have no fellows. Um, so it's really just our residents and medical students. Um, we do 13 four, walk, four week block rotations during the year, um, kind of a nice mix. Our continuity clinic, um, as uh, they did at Rush, is um, on campus, which is, um, I think, really nice. We've been doing a lot of work with diversity, um, as a lot of programs are. And in fact, are, we are having our first uh, DEI week uh, next week, where we're going to do sort of a really focused week, um, shining a lot of light on some of these important issues. Um, we're having book clubs and um, challenges and activities every day. So um, really looking forward to that. Um, we're located in the northern part of Indianapolis. Lots of great places to live around here. There's only two children's hospitals in the entire state. It's just us and IU. Um, so we really have a big catchment area. Um, great place to live. I actually have lived all over. I came from San Diego and Boston and Chapel Hill and Michigan um, and have really loved uh, living here. So um, I am going to actually have TC talk a little bit more. Hey guys, um, I am a second year at Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. I just wanted to hop on and just say a few things from a resident perspective that we love about the program. Um, I am from Indianapolis, so I'll give a quick plug to the city of Indianapolis. Um, I've lived here for almost 20 years now. It was a great place to live. I have uh, my family's close by. My wife and I have a young son, so it's a great place to be and live. Um, and it's even better being at Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. So um, I think just from a resident perspective, I can't stress enough how much I value uh, the relationship we have with our faculty. Uh, being a smaller program, I know everyone that I work with on a daily basis. So I get, you know, we know all of the subspecialists because we are the team on the floor. And when they need some help with the kid on the floor, we are the, the people that they come talk to first. Um, so we get one-on-one -on -one contact with subspecialists, hospitalists, our outpatient doctors. Um, and then that just allows us to foster uh, really great relationships um, in terms of mentorship. We have uh, kind of a program uh, APD or um, doc as one of our um, our advisors the first year and then as we figure out kind of what we're doing over the course of the next couple of years we can pick and choose people who we think we either identify with on a personal level or subspecialists and the great thing again about being in that small program is if you pick someone and then you see someone else in the hall you can ask them for advice about kind of what you want to do um, and then just being in the city of Indianapolis um, like Dr. Patel said it, it's a Indianapolis is a city of 800,000 people, and we are one of two children's hospitals there. So we see a wide variety of patient populations. And I think that's just a really good experience um, because we really get to see it all. One minute. Awesome. Sally, do you want to um, chime in as an intern? Um, sure. So I'm actually not from Indianapolis. I came from Arizona. And um, what drew me to the program, like, 
when I was applying last year. Um, I know a lot of you guys are going to do the virtual thing. And if you're not from here, um, I would say listen to your gut, like to the people that you're interviewing with. And if you feel like you connect with them, um, I don't have any family here, but I immediately felt like as cheesy as it is, like I felt like a home or like family feel during my interview. And um, I could definitely say my first couple months here, um, I still have that. Everybody is very supportive. Um, if somebody hears you're having a bad day, they immediately text you and reach out. Um, so it's definitely a great place to be. And I'm happy with like my choice, but good luck to everybody doing virtual interviews. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks both of you. Uh, yes, definitely reach out if you guys have any other questions, um, but um, best of luck and um, I will let you guys move to the next one. Hi everyone, my name is Kate Watson and I'm one of the co-program directors from Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Um, I am joined today by Molly Mack, one of our amazing chief residents and Ursula Parlin and Brittany Ash, two of our great second year residents who will be joining us um, later for the resident question and answer center or session. And I'm really excited to be able to talk to you all about Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh is a mid-sized city. Um, we have, with the most recent survey, um, the largest population growth in 20 to 40 year olds. So you will feel right at home in the growing area of Pittsburgh. We also have a really large growth in our Latinx patient population, which our residents are excited to be able to serve. Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh is a large freestanding children's hospital um, and is the only children's hospital in Western Pennsylvania. And so we have a very large catchment area. Um, and um, we have all subspecialties represented within our hospital. We really focus on diversity of our resident population and the diversity of the patients that we serve as a strength of our program. Everyone brings their unique skills, talents, and prior training to the table, which makes us stronger as a program and really more able to serve the patients um, in the greater Pittsburgh area. We're a program that focuses on foundational work in primary care. I am a general academic pediatrician and so I'm really passionate about forming a great foundation for our residents um, in primary care. Two thirds of our residents do go into subspecialty training and fellowships. Uh, we are lucky enough to keep a good number of those residents at our hospital for their fellowship training, but we do send residents um, across the country for fellowships and all different subspecialties. Our primary care is housed both at our general academic pediatrics clinic, uh, which is about five minutes from Children's Hospital. And we have about 30 primary care clinics that we partner with in the greater Pittsburgh area. So if you're looking to serve an urban underserved patient population, um, we have that in our academic center with patients that have historically been marginalized in medicine and uh, working in a medical home where you can not only advocate for them, but really found, um, connect them with the services that may allow these children and families to thrive. We also have our community clinics that are in urban and suburban areas, um, if that's more of what you're looking for. When you match at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, mentorship is one of the first things we talk to you about, and we will match you with a mentor um, that will be a mentor that builds a team um, around you during your time in training in Pittsburgh to allow you to be successful we call this program our Bridges program because in Pittsburgh, Bridges help you get to where you're trying to be. Um, and this program has been very successful for us to really launch our residents into the careers that they're looking to find. We have eight different programs. We have 128 residents in our program. So we are a large uh, residency training program. We have categorical training, pediatrics, advocacy, leadership, and service training. Um, med peds, peds anesthesia, triple board, child neuro, NDD, and pediatric scientist development track. Um, so 
just as we do with the diversity of experiences prior to residency, we really look at these combined residencies um, as adding to the training experience in Pittsburgh. Wow. We're focused diversity, as you've heard uh, many other programs talking about, and we have a new curriculum that is a longitudinal curriculum called our anti-racist curriculum that was chief resident driven last year that's really found longitudinal homes in our curriculum and community embedded work. We have special interest group for residents that are interested in community activities, medical education and research. We start our residents off with a one week research rotation um, and intern year to really launch the the inquiry and QI safety or clinical research. Um, and I'm the most excited to say that we are really lucky um, and feel grateful to work in a city uh, where we feel like the city is cheering us on. Children's is really a jewel in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, and whether you're going to a sporting game, um, we have offered tickets to the Pirates and the Penguins and the Steelers games. Thankfully, those are back in action this year. Um, but it's a city where you can get outside, hike, bike, ski, um, do lots of outdoor activities um, not too far from the urban center uh, where we practice. So um, we're lucky to live in a city that we love to play in um, and serve the patients here to the best of our ability. So thanks so much for letting me talk about children's. I look forward to really highlighting our residents. Um, and thank you to Ursula, Brittany, and Molly for being on the call tonight. Thanks. All right, I believe that was our last program. So if the students or really anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. I just wanna say thank you to all the programs for, I know five minutes is not enough time. So I really appreciate you guys really jam packing all that awesome info in there. So I'll just open it up for questions.